Uh, now, we move on to the issue of um, security. Uh, you've highlighted a bit of that also. Now, what are the challenges that you, 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 you've seen with, with securing an edge uh, uh, infrastructure and edge computing infrastructure and like, any possible solutions? Yeah, yeah. You know, edge computing devices are more exposed or more vulnerable yeah. to attack. Because, uh, you know, at least if your cloud thing, you know, it's inside some cloud and they've got all kinds of security. But you're right, if I'm putting my little edge device out there, it's exposed to the real world. And so you've got to secure, you have to maybe try to do physical security if you can on the, on the edge device itself, which you may or may not be able to do. Um, simple things, you know, that edge device is probably running some kind of operating system, you know, Linux or Windows, you know, something like that. Um, and so you think about, you know, and this goes back to a lot of things we learned over the years with making smartphones more secure. Um, you know, you hear about things like secure boot, uh, you know, that replaced normal BIOS, um, you know, that UFI boot or whatever. Um, so having that secure boot when the thing's coming up, making sure that the device itself, the hard drives are encrypted. You know, if you're using Windows, use BitLocker, you know, encrypt the volumes other ways on if it's Linux or something else. Um, encryption, obviously, strong authentication to log in to be able to access that device directly, which needs to be able to remotely talk back to some server to change that over at different times just like we have to do at work <laughs> and when they make you change your password, um, things like that, just like rolling security keys uh, for IOT devices. Um, and so every step of the way, um, you know, me being a Microsoft guy, most of my career puts me in a strange position because most of the people I see doing stuff these days in IOT, it all seems to be about Linux or it's about some kind of real-time operating system. Um, all I would want to do is if it's a larger edge device, you know, like a small PC kind of rugged thing, like you would get from like a, like Dell makes those uh, HP edge line, Advantech. A lot of those can run Linux or windows. I would just say, don't forget that you get a lot of great security capabilities. Like if you're doing an embedded, like windows 10, uh, IOT enterprise, for instance, um, it has the ability to do, uh, you know, that, I guess it's kind of like whitelisting, um, where, where you can define, these are the only processes that are allowed to run on this entire operating system and I'm locking it down. And so if anything else, like a virus or anything else is trying to run or yeah. hacked, you know, the operating system will prevent that from happening. Um, you know, obviously you have basics like antivirus, you know, scanning and updating those things. And I know that sounds old fashioned, but it's still important. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like, it, it's just, you know, when we talk about security, it's like security layers in depth, yeah. um, it, you know? And so if you, hopefully you, the operating system on your edge device will give you a lot of those capabilities. Um, and I'm not saying you can't do it with Linux, but Windows makes it easy if, if you happen to be using Windows, for instance, out there uh, to, to enforce a lot of those physical security, security that has nothing to do with IoT. It's just really locking down that operating system. Um, and then, and then when, when then the IoT part itself, kind of like we talked about, make sure you're not listening. You're just always doing outbound connections. Um, you're always authenticating everything. So, you know, Obviously, you'll be listening a little, you're, depending yeah. on what your edge device does. Your IoT devices, it's, you know, it's weird. If it's, a, if it's an industrial setting, like manufacturing, and you might be connecting over Modbus or OPC or one of those kind of things, you may find yourself with an edge device with a serial port connecting to a machine or a PLC, and it may have to send commands over that PLC, over that serial port to get data back. On the other hand, there may be IoT devices that are posting data at you, you know, over yeah. HTTP, or they might be doing MQTT. If they are, then yes, your edge device actually does have to listen. And so it would have something that's kind of like a web server listening, um, which is also then goes back to the fact that like, you know, make sure that your embedded operating system has an embedded uh, 
firewall, for instance, you know, um, and so, you know, because when you're listening on ports, you know, you need to do that. And so if you're anything that's listening, you, you know, and I, and I think it's probably good practice anyway uh, to, you know, I know you will have to download one separate for Linux, but, you know, with Windows 10, you know, IoT, you know, there's a firewall that's been built in going all the way back to Windows XP. Um, and so make sure that's enabled and make sure it's only listening on the ports that you, you want to listen on, you know, maybe 443 for SSL or something like that. Um, a lot of these will probably sound like your typical boring IT yeah, <laughs> security yeah, it ideas. Um, but, you know, but yeah, it's super important since it's not hiding in your data center uh, inside a big building. You know, it's certainly more vulnerable. Uh, so off the top of my head, those are kind of the different layers I would think of to secure that device. Um, and then just also, uh, you know, it's great. You know, and again, I apologize for sounding like a Microsoft guy. You know, the first ever way when we started doing the notion of updating software over the air to update the devices yeah. that goes all the way back to the 1990s with windows update you know when windows update was invented i forgot if we had it on windows 95 we certainly did with windows 98 um you know consumer operating system yeah. that was revolutionary um it, before that you were having to go at a certain time to download a package and do the install yourself having Windows update, and then later on, Linux would start doing package managers to do something similar. But being able to orchestrate software updates or firmware updates to billions of PCs was a huge undertaking. And that was the first time Microsoft was doing global things that looked like the cloud even uh, back then in the 90s uh, to update PCs. So that you can use that same technology for your edge devices today um, cause you need to keep it up to date, you know, like security people will always tell you your device is only secure at a particular moment in time. Like right now it might be secure, but one hour from now, some hackers may have found a vulnerability for your yeah. operating system or your something. And so you have to keep it up to date. And so make sure you have a embedded operating system on your edge devices that can update itself with security patches and update, uh, antivirus that can update virus definitions as well, things like that. I think all those things will go into making sure that you've got the most secure edge devices possible. Oh, yeah, that's, that's quite interesting. And, and I remember I was watching a video sometime from, uh, from, from some guys from uh, Microsoft. They were explaining how uh, with, with Windows IoT, you're essentially taking that uh, security from ATMs, you know, ATM with Windows. Yeah, essentially yeah. taking that and putting it into a, a gateway. So you can already imagine how secure that makes your, your device. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, an ATM is a good example of an edge device, right? Exactly. It has to exactly. be very secure. Absolutely. Absolutely.